يعطيكم العافية جميعا uh, Today we will be solving an example on flexure design of beams We will consider in our example a simply supported beam of a 6.7 meter span The beam is subjected to three types of loadings The first load is the self weight, the weight of beam itself and we are going to calculate it using uh, the density of reinforced concrete. The second load is a superimposed load and we represent it as a linear, uniformly distributed linear load. And it has a value of 14.5 kilonewtons per meter. And the third load is a live load. And it has also a similar pattern as a superimposed load it's a uniformly distributed load of an intensity uh, of 29 kilonewtons per meter. We will be using concrete strength of 28 megapascals and a steel grade 420, which means the yield strength of the steel is 420 MPa. The dimensions of beam are given as B, which is the width, 355 millimeters, and H, which is the depth, it's 685 millimeters. So the first step is to determine the design moment, the ultimate moment. We all know that for simply supported beam, M ultimate is equal to W ultimate L square over eight. So in order to determine M ultimate, I have to determine first W ultimate, which is the ultimate distributed load. So the ultimate distributed load, as, we, as mentioned earlier, is composed of three types of loading. We have the beam weight. In order to determine the beam weight, I'm going to multiply the density or the unit weight of concrete, which is 24 kilonewtons per meter cube. We, you can consider it something between 24 and 25. We multiplied it with um, the cross-section area of the beam, which is 0 0.355. Here we trans, uh, transform the unit from millimeters to meter and we multiply it by the height also. So this term will give me the distributed self weight of the beam. Now, I'll be using two ultimate limit state combinations to combine the loads together. The first one is 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. 1.2 will be multiplied with uh, the addition of beam weight, the summation of beam weight, 5.836, and the superimposed load, which is 14.5, plus 1.6 will be multiplied by 29, which is the live load. Also, I have the second combination, which is 1.4 multiplied by dead weight, or total dead load. The first term gives me 70.8 kilonewtons per meter, while the second term gives me 28.47. So I'll be using the higher value. So now after we determine the value of W ultimate, I substitute it in this equation and hence I can determine M ultimate which is equal to W ultimate L square over 8. So 70.8, the W ultimate, L is 6.7 meter which is the span of the beam, L square over 8 and I get my design moment value which is 397.3 kilonewton dot meters. So, so after determining the moment, I'll calculate the required area of steel reinforcement. First of all, I use the equation that relates the Rn term to the moment, m ultimate term. This well-known equation is Rn equal to m ultimate over phi b d squared. m ultimate is the design moment, b is the width of the beam, phi is the factor of safety, and preliminary, I'll be assuming that uh, it's equal to 0 0.9, but this assumption is to be checked. Uh, I have to check that the section is tension controlled section. This step will be done at the end of the problem. And for D, we can assume that D is equal to, for single layer of reinforcement, usually D is equal to H minus 65 for single uh, layer of reinforcement. So six minus, uh, H minus 65 means that 685 minus 65. So I can assume that D approximately will be equal to 620 millimeters. 
So by substituting both terms, denominator term and the denominator, I can determine the Rn value, which is 3.235 megapascals. Then, by knowing Rn, I can substitute it with the second equation here, which is uh, which represents rho, the ratio of reinforcement in the beam. Rho is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C, which is the compressive strength divided by F yield, which is the yield strength of C rebars, multiplied by 1 minus radical 1 minus 2RN, the previously determined value here, divided by 0 0.85 F prime C, which is the compressive strength. So the only unknown here is rho. So by substituting all the values in this equation, we determine that rho is equal to 0 0.0083. Rho is the ratio of reinforcement. So, in order to determine AS, which is the area of steel, I have to multiply rho with the cross sectional area, the effective cross sectional area, which is B times D. D, the effective depth. B is the width. We already determined both terms. One is given, the second one was determined by the formula H minus 65 for single layer of reinforcement, for one layer of reinforcement. So, AS will be equal to 0 0.0083 times 355 times 620 and it will be equal to 1827 millimeters square i'll choose for example 329 millimeters bars each has a cross section area of 645 millimeters square so by multiplying this number by 3 the actual area of reinforcement will be equal to 1,935 millimeters square, which is greater than this number and is adequate for our case. So, after I determined the number of rebars, I have to make a check that AS, or the required ratio of reinforcement, is greater than the minimum required area of steel. So as per ACI code, I have two limitations for AS minimum. The first one is 0 0.25 times radical F prime C, which is 28 in our case, divided by F yield, which is for 20 MPa, multipl multiplied by the width of the beam times effective depth. Also, we have another limitation, which is 1.4 divided by F yield times also the effective area, which is B times D. So we compared, we removed the common terms B, D, F yield, B, D, F yield, and we compared 0 0.25 radical F prime C to 1.4, and we figured out that the second term will be governing since I, I'll choose the, the higher value between these two terms. So we adopted this formula as AS minimum, and we, ter we determined AS minimum as 1.4 over 420 times b times d 355 times 620 and the final answer was 733.7 millimeter square which is much uh, smaller than uh, as or the uh, required ratio of reinforcement so we are in the safe side everything is okay until now now the second or the second check is for uh, the value of phi. I have to make sure first of all that uh, I'll be using a field first of all and I'll be assuming or I usually build my assumptions on uh, the fact that the steel has yielded uh, by the time of failure so I have to make sure that the steel has yielded uh, and based on this I can determine the value of phi. Uh, which will be multiplied by mn to determine the uh, uh, capacity of the beam. Also, this equation will be used uh, in order to uh, make the final check and to make sure that everything is okay. So, A is equal, first of all, we all know that the T force in the tension zone will be equal to the C force in the compression zone, as we discussed, uh, as we discussed it last time. So, from the first equation, T force equal to T force, we can uh, determine the following formula: A small 
equal to AS a field over 0.85 F prime C times D. And by determining A, which is the depth of stress block, in our case here it's equal to 96.2, there's a relation that relates um, A to C, C the depth of a neutral axis. We, you know, the, the, you remember the factor beta 1 that depends on the compressive strength of concrete, and we say that for compressive strength, values less than 28, less than or equal to 28, beta 1 is equal to 0 0.85. So by knowing A, by knowing beta 1, I divide A by beta 1 and I can determine C. C is the depth of a neutral axis. And this value C can be used to determine the strain at steel level by compatibility of, of strains. We say that eta S is equal to D minus C over C, eta C ultimate, which is the ultimate strain in concrete. I have D, I have C, I have determined C. Also, I have the uh, ultimate strain in concrete, which is 0 0.003. I can determine the strain at steel level, which has a value of 0 0.0134. And by the way, it's greater than the yielding uh, strain. How uh, do we determine this uh, yielding strain? By dividing the yield strength over the elasticity modulus in case uh, it's not given in any problem. So we compare it to S with it to yield. It's greater than it to yield. So I can say that Fs, which is the stress in steel, is equal to a field. And therefore, I can substitute here this term as a field. Now I can say that Mn, which is the nominal moment, is equal to a, the, uh, there are two formulas. We use one of them. If you go back to the lecture, there are two formulas for Mn, either 0.85 F prime C B D uh, B times D minus A over 2, or the second one, which is this, Mn is equal to AS a field D minus A over 2. I have AS, which is the actual ratio of the actual area of reinforcement. If yield, we prove that we can use a field as 420. D minus A over 2, I have everything here also. So Mn will be equal to 464.8 kilonewtons dot meter. This is the nominal moment. This is the nominal moment. Now, in order to use the appropriate value of phi, I have to make sure first of all that the strain, the determined strain, eta S, is greater than 0.005. If this is true, I can use phi as 0 0.9 because in this case, the section is fully ductile or is a tension control section. So here I will use 0 0.9 as phi and you can say that m ultimate or phi mn is equal to 0 0.9 times 464.8 kilonewton dot meter. The final answer will be 418.3, which is greater than the uh, acting moment or the applied moment on the beam which is 397.3 kilonewtons dot meter which is acceptable okay the design is economical there is no huge difference between both magnitudes that's everything for this example as you see it's not that hard example i hope that the idea was clear and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to email and ask um at the end i want to say stay safe study well wassalamu alaikum